So what is your self-care? It might be going out for a walk, it might be um, watching some training academy videos. What is your self-care? Because we know that if you're looking after yourself, mm -hmm. like we, we know that that's a big part of this and we know that sometimes life can get tough and we can get a little bit overwhelmed. So sometimes overwhelm kicks in. Has anyone out there ever felt overwhelmed? So tell me if you felt overwhelmed or you can put a thumbs up or tell me in the comments if you've ever felt overwhelmed because overwhelm is a very typical yeah. normal feeling. I, I just got to grab this comment right here because I think this is um, something that I want to speak on quickly. And Venetia says, oh, I'm so excited about this. You guys are always on top of things. I th Venetia, the key is that we can't say this enough. Our mission is to make sure that you get better and better real life results, okay? So, um, uh, science behind it. The, literally, I, I was just thinking about this because we were talking about this with the, the pro dog trainer um, geek students just the other day. It's all well and good science, but it's the science that gets real life results that is the focus. And when, and this is where you've got to think, what is your powerful why? Your powerful why might be about your dog right now. Make it your mission. Our, our powerful why, our mission is to make sure that you get better and better real life results. And that's why over the next kind of few months to a year, years, it's going to get exciting. So Jane says, absolute dogs is good for the human mental health. Love the positive vibes. And I think that Jane, that's the thing that I've realized more and more. We never set out to do this for um, positive human like vibes. And yet that's something that we get you guys commenting on all the time. We're so lucky to have that. So we have such a powerful, supportive community. Um, and I think it's something that we should be um, really um, looking after and embracing. A lot of people get overwhelmed. And one of our strategies, if ever we get overwhelmed, and I know that we were, I, I was talking to a friend only this week who's had some real struggles I mean like really pretty um, serious stuff and, and very very upsetting and and she feels overwhelmed and she feels like there's no way out or she feels like that there's not an answer or she feels like it's just not going in the way she wants it and it could be about training or it could be about life and often it's probably a combination of all of it so sometimes overwhelm and um, the way that we live these days it's modern society like yeah you guys want to train your dogs but there are so many other things happening all the time and the way that sort of social media works is you're being fired things from left right and center first thing that we do if we're ever we're feeling overwhelmed is actually we try and get on paper mm -hmm. so we try and put everything on paper we've got more people listening and um, so we try and put everything on paper and we get it out of our heads so we get it out of our heads and we pop it onto paper and we we we, we don't get in our heads when we get in our heads we overthink things we get ourselves into it's funny old we take ourselves down have you, have you ever done this told yourself weird stories or is it just me and him and um, you know what you take yourself down a route that you think is actually like completely ridiculous and particularly late night is one of my my if i if i was to i don't really have this anymore maybe six seven years ago i had it more i do now and again but most of the time now i'm pretty good at interrupting myself um but like really 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 going down that like overwhelmed route right yeah. like people get overwhelmed so easily yeah. in this life and i think the big thing is is when you're experiencing overwhelm that's a sign that probably you're creating a story in your head and you're and you're creating that story did you hear that you're creating the there's, story there's a struggle going on right there's a struggle happening absolutely okay. um, and that's cool because we can turn struggles to strengths remember and <laughs> the thing is that that struggle in itself is never the actual problem that's causing that it's all the stories that you're putting on around it and what it means and 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 how it's going to pan out actually like the first question that, that you should ask yourself once you've kind of brain dumped on the paper i think that's the thing to say um is Rude. what what really is the problem right what is the pro actual problem here so and and i'm going to go to a dog training example because that's immediately where my mind goes and I'm gonna think about all of the labels that people try and put on your dogs. They try and put the label of reactive. They Sue try and harrowing. put the label of aggressive. Sue Harrowing, you stay under our wing, we'll help. We're here they, to help. They put the label of your dog's got obsessive compulsive disorder, right? I only received a message from someone like an hour ago and their dog's been diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. And therefore they've adopted all of the stories that go with that and label all of, of the difficult lifestyle, to resolve. And all of the lifestyle and, that goes with it. So they've kind of adopted already that kind of like, it's a bit of a, um, what do you give someone when they've um, a sentence? Yeah. So they've kind of taken the sentence with it. Yeah. Um, I think that's yet, huge. Actually, when you say, no, my dog doesn't have, but it is, doesn't have obsessive compulsive disorder. Currently, they're chasing light a lot. <laughs> and yeah. as soon as you say that, uh, right now, the they're chasing light a lot. It's or so they, much better. they spin and they grab the tail. Yeah. It's a bit annoying. Or another one that that we we commonly get where people feel overwhelmed and they Very start quickly, creating just stories. Just before you get uh, the, the, so, Venture, uh, my working cocker spaniel, um, she um, she she always has this annoying thing where she likes to spin right. You know what? It's still there a little. I interrupt it a lot, and it's kind of got a lot better. But I 
I've never thought to myself she has an, a, an obsessive compulsive mm. disorder mm. and that it's going to cause a problem. But if someone never thought that came way. to you and gave you that label, all of I a mean, sudden thank you'd God. adopt and all thank, of the thank stuff. thank God we know not to, right? Like, and thank yet, God we know not to. And the fact is, when, when someone, and, and uh, this is like a, a bit of a, like a, what is it, soapbox moment, but... Um, when someone described, when a trainer or a behaviourist described themselves as, well, like Laurie, a, as a... Laurie had, people told me my dog was autistic. Yeah, and when, when trainers or behaviourists describe themselves in terms of being a specialist of a label, do you think that label is serving a purpose to the dogs and the people they work with, or is actually that label serving a purpose to themselves and making themselves in some way... Well, Give whatever a reason need. for it, an excuse, a yeah. label to kind of excuse it and allow it and to allow it to almost facilitate yeah. it a little. So another example, um, I'll go dog training again, and that is that you go for a walk you're, you're, and you've got your six-month-old puppy and they've been amazing. You go for a walk one day and your puppy barks at another dog. What happens in that moment? Do you think my dog just barked at another dog, or do you think I had a reactive dog once? Now this one's reactive. Now we're gonna I, have this is problems. the road. I, I, it's going to be so difficult to resolve. He's never going to be able to meet another dog. He's never going to have great relationships with other dogs. This is not the dog that I was thinking that I was getting into. You see how quickly you, we we can all relate to what I you just said a yourself, little bit, right? You can get down that route where you start telling yourself a story. You make yourself a, a route up, and that's where you're going. Your dog just barked once. <laughs> Calm down. What happens today Calm does down. not necessarily happen tomorrow. Your dog barked once. Calm down. There is no need for label, 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 label. Chill Overwhelm. out. Chill like, out. If you, if you kind of think in terms of labels, you're going to be very susceptible be, to overwhelm. Be very honest, guys, if you've ever done that. My dog just did one thing. Ah! And it's all gone wrong. I'll give you one more example. And this is a lifestyle example of overwhelm. So you've got all of the training ideas, you've been watching the videos and actually your days are just getting really hectic and your days are quite busy at the moment and you start to feel like, actually, I can't do the, I can't do it and I'm not getting time to do it and I'm not getting time to do that. And actually you start feeling overwhelmed at the fact that you're not necessarily putting in the time that you want to be. Stop that is overwhelm. So um, for me, I, I get that. I mean, we're, we're now away, we're working. So I've got no access to my dogs. I've got absolutely no access to them. That doesn't send me in a story down, they're not getting training and I'm letting them down. It sends me in a story that um, actually they're having a great time to recharge. When I do have time, they're gonna have empty buckets because they're actually not doing too much training in the next couple of weeks. Um, over super trainer, how much time do our dogs get? Really, like very, very Not. little. We just look at it as a as a as, as an opportunity to 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 empty their bucket and to to be ready for when we are about to start again. So we we interrupt that overwhelm. We give it like a let's interrupt it. So I stop myself going down that route. I can't train them for five days, six days, seven days, eight days, nine days, ten days, two weeks, whatever. It doesn't actually matter. And um, interrupt it and I replace it with something better, which is for me they're having a bucket holiday. Um, that actually um, they're going to be recharged when I am ready to train them. Um, I get to get excited about training them again because actually you get um, to come you away, get nice, regroup, nice, and go back. A nice moment to rethink it. I get to do a better training plan for them so I can focus on that if I need to. Whatever it is that allows you to interrupt that and then replace it with something better is really important. And for me, not allowing that overwhelm to take over. Yeah. So we've kind of done a whistle stop tour of a load of tips there. Get it on paper. What is the problem? Pro the problem really? If you speak in the language of labor, you're going to make yourself susceptible to adopting okay. other people's stories. All of these things, the dog world is for sure rife with. Even if you hop up onto a Facebook group that isn't a, an absolute dog's one and you'll see labels, 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 labels. Be careful what you expose yourself to because you'll start adopting them. It's super, super easy.